Hey everybody, Bungsy here with another ultralight review on ultralight backpacking. Today we're talking water crossings, and in particular, water shoes. Let's jump in. Get it? I know, corny dad joke. Okay, my friends, here's my advice. Don't do it. You don't need water shoes. So really, this short video is more about making the case for why you shouldn't use them. Now, if you absolutely insist, then I suggest you get shoes that A, uh, that one, excuse me, are light as possible, two, dry quickly, and three, are not bulky. So if you must, my personal, rec personal recommendation is a pair of Bedrock Sandals Classic Sandals, which weigh about nine ounces for a pair. They are light, there is very little fabric to even stay wet, and they store flat and out of the way, as you can see. I've got a link for you in my video description down below should you want a closer look at these babies. Bedrock Sandals is a great company that makes great products. But again, you don't need water shoes. First off, you should be wearing breathable trail runners, nothing waterproof, and some fairly light socks. You don't need thick socks. When you see water, enjoy it. Walk right through it. Enjoy the bath. Let them breathe. Let them dry off. You'd be amazed how quickly the water drains and your feet start to dry when wearing thin socks and runners that are not waterproof. I truly enjoy water crossings and getting my feet wet. I look forward to it. I'm not done making my case though. Let's now look at the numbers of committing to water shoes. I think this is quite eye-opening. Okay, so you walk up to a stream. First off, you need to find a dry, clean-ish spot to take off your pack and sit down on the ground. Let's say that takes only one minute. Now you need to undo your gaiters, untie your shoes, remove them, and remove your socks. Let's say that that takes two minutes. It may actually take more than that, but let's leave it at two. You now have to unpack your water shoes and then find a place to store your dry shoes and socks so that they A, don't get wet during the crossing, B, don't fall out and wash away during the crossing, no bueno, and C, don't get everything else in your pack filthy. Only after you've done all of that can you then get up and put your pack back on. It's not that easy. Let's allot only two minutes to this, though again, it could take longer than this easily. Okay, so you've made it across the water now. Now it's time to find a dryish spot to reverse the exercise. Let's give you one minute to get situated on the other side on the ground. Have you ever tried to put socks on wet feet? Not to mention with close to numb feet. It's not pleasant or quick. You'll probably dry off your feet a bit first. After all, your goal is to stay dry, right? So let's give it one minute to dry and clean up. And again, it could take longer, but we'll call it one minute. Now it's time to put your shoes back on. Let's let them tie them up well and replace your gaiters. That's got to take at least two minutes. For some of you, that might be closer to five minutes, but we'll leave it at two. And lastly, another minute to store your water shoes and get your pack back on. Grand total, that's 10 minutes, and that's just for one crossing. If you're crossing water once, you're probably going to end up crossing water several times. If you have, say, six water crossings in a day, which is not a crazy number, that is one hour of time eaten up during the day over your water shoes. Hike your own hike, of course, but realize and own the fact of how much time you are committing to your water shoes. An hour a day? You also really need to take into account your buddies if you're hiking in a group. If they are not carrying water shoes, that's one hour each day of them staring at you while you futz with your feet. Again, no judgment here, but you better have some pretty patient friends. So you say, yeah, but Bungsy, I don't want to hang around camp in wet shoes. First off, I'd argue that they won't be that wet, even if you had just crossed uh, water before hitting camp. And second, I'd say, watch my sock video. Here's a link to it, if you haven't seen it already. My advice, don't do it, especially in three season hiking. If it's insanely cold, then maybe, but just maybe. And again, stop down, stopping down in the freezing cold to expose your feet to a, is a miserable exercise. Your feet will dry out and warm up pretty quickly, even in cold weather. I've looked down and seen ice on the outside of my shoes before, while my feet work just fine. And again, uh, watch my sock system video. Well, that's all the time I need. I hope I gave you something to think about. Please take the time to hit like and subscribe. I know you hear that all the time, but it makes a huge difference to us content creators. It's how you keep us going. So please take the time to hit like and click on the Bongzi logo to subscribe. Thanks, and I'll catch you in my next ultralight review on ultralight backpacking. See ya.